Hello and welcome to Movie Muster once more. The second season of Industries Episode 4 is summarized here. The main premise of the episode There Are Some Women is the relentless investigation of a self-serving business that is spitting out the bones of its most loyal supporters. There are some women in this summary of Episode 4 of Season 2 of Industry. In recent weeks, the entertainment industry has made a point to provide at least one frightening, nerve-wracking moment usually in utterly obscure bench terms. Even though the bulk of us, including myself, have no understanding what the word means, we can still grasp it. Deal making is in progress. A customer might stutter. The feeling is what matters, the details actually don't matter. You also understand that whatever is at stake is significant in some way and that whomever sets their head on the guillotine won't have to endure a long silence before hearing the sound of the blade. However, there are some women, lacks a similar moving scene. Instead, it sounds like a slow dirge as a man marches toward his impending destiny. You can sense the end coming even if it's not fully clear whether it will be caused by your own choices or those of someone else. The moment Eric is suddenly hacked by someone he hired is the most crucial sequence in the episode. In this realm, you can grow an animal from conception only to have it eat you. I wouldn't say that this episode tries to make us feel bad for Eric but it does want us to understand why he had to repress his feelings in order to protect himself. He received racial treatment from even his closest mentors. However, he learned from them, took what he needed from them, and then followed in their footsteps. He knows how to deal with it. He won't likely be surprised when the individuals he trained start tightening the hangman's rope because of this. But it keeps burning. How can someone dub the Terminator be reduced to that? The real problem is isolation. Eric learned how to create calluses to protect his exposed skin. Even though we have never had any cause to believe he had any, that also meant he was shut off from his friends and family. As Aaron Ralston, the climber who played James Franco in the film 127 Hours, demonstrated when he chopped off his own arm to save the rest of him. It is increasingly clear that the only way to survive in finance is to remove the parts of your body you are least connected to. What transpires when you comprehend how costly these sacrifices are is a theme in some women exist. It's about slowly realizing that if you're willing to reveal this much about yourself, you'll eventually have to let go of something you'd like to hold on to. There is an extremely sympathetic moment when Robert can be seen being crushed by the quick realization that he is not exceptional or unique to Harper when she casually informs him that Nicole attacked her. He had essentially prostrated himself at her feet in exchange for a deal, and now he was simply another tool at her disposal. Robert doesn't seem to be looking forward to this information, but we most likely will soon. Yaz, though, also seems to be going through a personal crisis. She hasn't had to make a sacrifice in the usual sense, therefore hers is instead the outcome of that. Even at the worst and most difficult time of the COVID-19 outbreak, which for many individuals was the worst and most difficult time of their lives, Yaz, the heir to a publishing dynasty, never worried about money. She didn't ever change her manner of living. She simply continued to act as she had in the past and according to her preferences. However, she unlocked a closet door that was filled with skeletons as she tried to transfer her father's financial affairs to Pierpoint. Due to daddy's multiple offenses, the majority of his funds have been used to buy women's silence through long-term non-disclosure agreements. I'm not sure, but he claims that he will have enough money to endure for many lifetimes. Yaz does not as well. Yaz's outburst above, driven by coke, has taken the place of the usual high-pressure cell situation. Despite having a different tone, it is nevertheless strong. Marissa Abela is amazing in this sequence in addition to Harper, who doesn't sell her reaction. When Harper tried to be sympathetic and offered, I'll bring you some water, she was essentially saying, welcome to the real world. She probably needed to stop by by now. Another interesting turn of events is that Harper teams up with DVD, perhaps as part of a keep your friends close scheme, since she immediately informs Bloom that she is keeping an eye on him because she knows he is a seller. They are also difficult to believe, but having to deal with it in all of your platonic and romantic interactions must be sad when the people you care about and trust are always the ones to use the axe to bring you to your knees. Actually, it comes as no surprise that these people utilize drugs. I appreciate your attention. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and leave comments on more videos.